Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Helton's Computer Repair here with a video for you. As you do notice, this is a Windows 11 operating system that is pretty much going to be out eventually in a couple months or so. Uh, from pretty much from Microsoft. We didn't think that it was going to happen, but here we are again with Windows 11. Regardless, depending on your system, if you are going to have a... If you're on developer right, right now or on beta version, then you probably have... Depending if you just had a regular Windows 10, not a 10 Pro, you possibly might have to sign into Microsoft for you to be able to create a user for this to work. And it could be related of this problem for you. So on this, we're going to be showing you how to add pretty much a local user on Windows 11. Now we're going to show pretty much four different ways. We're going to be using it through going to regular settings, adding it. We're going to be showing you how to add it using NetPLWiz. We're going to be showing you how to use local account and local user and groups for this to work. And we're also going to be showing you how to use command prompt or pretty much terminal. They'll pretty much work the same, maybe both. Regardless, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing you do is pretty much you need to go to start. You can pretty much type in Windows key and I, or you can just pretty much go to start. And somewhere you should see settings, or you can search it. You'll pretty much find settings there. So here we are. And once you get to there, we're going to go to accounts. From there, we're going to see family and other users. Go ahead and select it. And once you see there, you're going to see a selection that says add other user. Go ahead and press add G account. And here we are for it. Give it a little second. It tells us that if you don't have a sign-in information, that you, if you want to sign in, you can. If you want to create a Microsoft, I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm going to choose, I don't have a personal sign-in information. And once there, it's going to tell us if you want to create an email or a phone number instead. I'm going to still go ahead and press add a user without a Microsoft account. They try and push it down to there. Now right here, I'm going to be doing this four times. So it's going to be called different users. So I'm going to name this called, um, I actually had caps on there. And I'm going to type in just any user you want it to be called. I'm just going to call mine temp1, just an example. Because I'm going to be showing you four different ways how to do this. Now, by default, if you're pretty much done like this and you want to put a password, you can pretty much just press next. But if you do put a password on there that I am actually going to be doing, it's probably going to be simple. Oh, it already came up. So I put a password on there. It's pretty simple. I just put one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, pretty much when that does happen, it does enable this extra feature. It might probably go next on there and it might come up but it will ask you for security questions. Now, there is a way that you can skip this without having to put these, forget your password on here. Um, if you do this and you do not have network, so let me give this a try real quick. So we, uh, I'm gonna go again to add user. And I'm gonna follow the steps. I'm gonna press I don't have. And I'm gonna say without Microsoft account. And you see, I was going to the process and I typed it. I'm just gonna name it user. I'm gonna type in one, two, three, four, five, six. And well, it seems they updated. So now it's pretty much coming out in case questions on here. I'm gonna go ahead and try this and see what happens if I turn off the network for it for a second. So right now, where are we at? Settings. Oh, come on. It's taking a little bit. There's network. Let me see if I can just turn this off for a second. I love how they make this thing so much more info. I'm just gonna do this so it's simple. I'm going to go back to accounts. I'm going to go to start. I'm going to type in control panel because I still love the old classic features that are here. We're going to go to networks, network and sharing centers. And I'm going to go to adapter settings. And I'm going to technically just disable this for a second. And I'm going to go back to sign in options. And I'm going to go ahead and where are we at? We're in sign in options. We're going to actually to accounts. And we're going to add a user. So this is family and other users. We're going to click it. And we're going to create an add an account. And it tells us that it didn't even skip us to the point of asking us to sign in. It went straight directly to us. So I'm going to go ahead and type in user. Actually, I'll name this to temp, just an example. Temp1 that we were doing. And I type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it seems 5, 6. And it doesn't, well, it seems that they're still asking for get your question. So on the old Windows 10, they did not ask this question for it. So it seems that they are going to ask you to add these additional settings for it regardless. So I'm going to go ahead and re-enable that and let me exit the control panel. So here we are. I put the password very simple. I can ask multiple questions. What's my personet, pet's name? I'm going to name it numbers. Just why not? And then I can put what's the city we are born. Um, I'm going to put something simple. This would not really matter too much for it because this is just a temporary user. What's your travel nickname? I'm going to name it my PC. And I'm going to see if these will work through it. Let's go ahead and press next. And it did create the local user. Now, the user is created. 
and by default it's pretty much set as a standard user so we'll go ahead and to pretty much account type if you want that another user to have administrative rights you would have to change it to administrator and press ok and that is pretty much it you would have to sign up to this user that you might be signed into and you now have your local user now when you go to other users on there let me see if I can go back and go to accounts you can probably manage other users or when you're signed into the other one and you could probably be removed from that other account so right now I'm signed in to us so I'll show you again how to switch over so here's the first one that was created I want you to have to simply just go into settings this is not really the best if you don't want to have those multiple questions for that so we're gonna go to step two and see if we can do this through using net POWIS. So let's go ahead and do that round so on search or on the search bar or there it doesn't really matter gonna to get to the same point All we're gonna do is go ahead and type in net PL whiz and this should come up now you'll get selected and here we are once you get to there you'll see as you see there's two users that are there I'm gonna go ahead and press add and it's gonna come up to this other layout now you can sign into using your email if you want to again I don't want to do it. I want to create a local user sign in without a Microsoft account and once you get to there you'll see a local account go ahead and tell it to create now right here I'm gonna type in a username I'm gonna name this called temp2 and I can put a password, whatever I want it to be, again. And on the hint, I'm just going to type in numbers, just an example for it. I'm going to press next. And that is pretty much simple. I didn't have to add those additional three questions that were randomly tossed in there. So that's the second user. Once the user has been created there, you might need to go to properties of it or double tap it. It'll get to the same place. You can click it or you can press properties. And then from there, you're going to go to group, membership, and you'll change it that you want it to be an administrator, and you can press apply and OK. Now, technically, when you're on here, if you sign up to your other user, you can pretty much go to the user that you don't want. You can go to properties, and you can change it to standard user, or you will technically have the options to delete the other user. Let's say if I was signed into user that I'm right now, I can sign out and go to the other user, and I can remove this account for it. And that's pretty much how that can be done, one of the ways. No, that's pretty much it. Now I want to be showing you another route. This only works if you have Windows 11 Pro or if you have Enterprise or an Education Edition that's installed on there. So to do this, you can pretty much go to Start or the search bar. And all you have to do is type in, well, you can type in Local Users and Groups. Or you can just type in LUS. And then you're going to type in RMGR.MSC. And this is what will come up here. Now, technically, I think you could literally just type in local user and groups. Let's see. Let's see if it's not wanting to. So I guess that'll be the command that we'll have to type in. LUSRMGR.MSC. And I'll take you to this location. And once you get to there, go ahead and select it. And this is what you're going to have for it. Once you get to there, you can pretty much go to users, accounts, users. And you see right now I have two users that are created right now. There's temp1 and temp2. And all you pretty much have to do is go to more options on the right side. I'm going to say a new user. And you can name the username. I'm going to name this called um, temp3. You can put your full name if you want to. You can put descriptions. You can tell if you want to have a password. I'm putting a password that's pretty much simple again. You can say the user must change the password next login. You can put that if you want for person jet and that will be prompt for security. Or you can pretty much go to user cannot change password, depending on other users and stuff like that. Or you can put the password never expires. This is pretty much my standard ones. I usually just want a password set and the password never expires. And that's pretty much it. And now the user is created. Now let me X this out. And now we are. We have temp3 and it's pretty much set. And that's pretty much how you can be done on there. And now the second option that could be done on this, we're going to be pretty much going to be doing this through, we can do this pretty much using PowerShell or command prompt. So on this one, you'll pretty much go to start or the search bar. You can type in CMD. And when you do this, you will need this to work as administrator for this to work. So here we are. You see command prompt. Right click on it and be sure that you press run as administrator. This will not work for the, if you try this. It'll say that it doesn't have access. And I'll show you this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to start. And I'm going to just go ahead and type in CMD. And when I try this and just run it, I'm going to type in net user. My name is called temp4 slash add. And it's going to say access denied. So you need this to run on Minister. So again, you'll press there on search bar, type in CMD, right click on it, and select run as administrator. And pretty much you'll come up to this point. You will be prompted. Go ahead and press yes. And here we are pretty much having the same thing for there. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and type in this following command for this to work. So it would be net user. 
and the name of the user. Now, technically, we want to put like something like called temp and temp, or let's say like example like let me make this easier. You want it to be like the user account to be called John Smith. You, you will need to have the what are these called right here? Once I'll show you what it is. Oh yeah, they're called the quotation marks for them. Pretty much quotations. That's pretty much you're gonna need to put that on there, the mark on it, and that'll pretty much keep those two words as one user. You're gonna type in slash add and press enter. Now pretty much the command has been created. Now once that's been done, the user is created and it's set up as a standard user. Now to put this into an administrator, right, you will need to do this following command. So pretty much what you're gonna need to do is type in net. I'm trying to misspell that. We're gonna type in net. Let me move the mouse out of the way for you. We're gonna type in local group. And we're gonna type in administrator. And then pretty much, I just did John Smith. I could have just totally created the other user. So actually, let me show that example. I added John Smith, but that was the main thing. I would actually want to show you the same way using like temp. So we're using like temp for, and it doesn't have a space. So the user, you can just actually can just type this in and now the user is created. So either or, those both users are now created. Now to make them to be an administrator, because right now they're set up as a standard user, you can actually can type in netpowiz and open it up and do it, and I'll show you how to do it in a bit. But if you do not want to use netpowiz, you can type in the following command. You'll type in net local group. I'm going to type in administrators. And we're going to type in the name of the user. So mine is temp4, okay? And then what you're going to do is type in slash add. And now it has been done. Now, technically, we're going to do the same thing. If we're going to use the other user, like let's say you wanted to put John Smith, you would, because it has a space, you would have to type in John Smith. And we have to close this up with the quotation right there. And pretty much here it is, net local user administrators, John Smith, and add. Now it is created. Now to find out to be sure if they do have administrator rights, I'm going to go ahead and type in net PL whiz. And here we are, I have multiple users that are created. Now they have users and administrative accounts. So there they are for it. So it's pretty much set. It seems I did the one on temp3. So let's see if I did temp3 for this. Okay, actually I'll show you that one. I think I left a step behind you. So that's pretty much how to do this. Right now I was using the other command that was showing us how to add a user using the local users and groups so pretty much i did create this then this only works for windows 11 pro enterprise or educations so if you use the l u s m r m g r i'm probably misspelling this yes i am that it was correct msc i did create the other user and it was created i'm gonna go ahead and expand this but because i did create the third one i it is there i do need to go to properties of it and one of the things I need to do is go to member of, and I need to add the member and add administrators. I'm trying to spell that. Oh, administrators. And now it is added to the list and press apply and okay. So now it will give administrator rights. So now if I go pretty much type in net POWIS, it now has administrative rights underneath the temp3, so now it's pretty much it. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you don't really care any of these, I can pretty much show you how to do this. You don't have to technically need to use CMD. Either you can use PowerShell, that can pretty much do the exact same step too. I typed in CMD. If you don't want to use CMD, you can use PowerShell. The main thing that when you do this, if you do run it, you will need to run as administrator also for this to work. So the same concept should still work the same, and that is pretty much it. Now, if you don't want these users that we just created, I can do this real easy. I can just type in net POWIS because this is probably almost the easiest one I can do. I can just delete a user if I want to, like temp4, remove it, and it's pretty much deleted. I can delete another one just to show you an example. Yes. Other options that you can be done for this, you can also type in like CMD. So I'm going to go ahead and type in CMD. And I'm going to go ahead and press register. Administrator. You will need this. You'll probably be prompted. I can type in the net user the name of the user so i'm going to go to temp2 now technically if it has a space you will need to add these for it quotations for it but we don't really need it right now it's just called temp2 i want to type in forward slash i'm going to type in delete del and it will delete the user for it and that's another option you can do this another option if you don't want it to be there if you want to delete it you can pretty much go to another options 
we can do the route going to if you have the Windows 11 Pro Enterprise or Education, you can type in that same command. What was the command that we we're just using? Oh yeah, it's l u s r m g r dot e x uh, m s c m s c. I'm getting confused in my head. And there we are. Go ahead and open it. You can have the other you said you don't want. So technically, if I don't want John Smith, I can just pretty much delete him. He's deleted. I'll tell you you're about to delete the user. I'm gonna press OK, and it's pretty much gone. Last option, if you don't want to do that, I can pretty much go to start and I can type in net POWIS if I'm correctly. Let's see. Actually, take cancel that. I don't even have to do I think I already showed that one. The other option we can do is go to pretty much control panel, not control panel, to settings. We can go to settings for it and we can go to accounts and we can go to family and other users. And there's the temp use that we created. If you're not wanted, we can press remove and the pretty much delete and the data from it and that's pretty much it. The other thing that does happen on here sometimes users do create so users do get in the folders if that ever does happen in some reason once you have deleted those users you can pretty much go to explore if you want to like this open up explore and you'll get to this PC go to type in properties and when you get to the PC you're gonna see lots of big settings we really don't care that much or we're gonna go to advanced system settings right here and from there you'll see user profiles if there are additional user profiles that say unknown profile go ahead and delete them and that will help you out to delete the stuff that's sitting in that user accounts you will have to delete those other accounts first before you be able to delete it it won't work like that so if i try and delete myself it won't let me delete myself and i can't delete the default profile that's the profile when you're currently on right now and that's pretty much it thanks for watching from helton's computer repair and i will see you on the next video Thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, then hit that button. But if you like it and you want to see more, hit that like button. Get subscribed, comment, and tell us what other tech videos you want to see. Consider checking out our merch store. Link in the video description. And for the rest, I will see you on the next video.